Hey everybody, it's your friend Roaming Reb Zev. Wanted to say hello, see what's going on with you. Hope everything is great. Another beautiful day. At least the afternoon has been nice. It was kind of cloudy this morning, but uh, now the sun is out. People are smiling a little more. Kind of nice, really. Still very cool for this uh, area, but uh, still a nice day. And I was thinking about uh, a lot of different things, and I know one of the things that uh, Rav Dror said earlier today was how, you know, the Tzadikim, they did not want to come back and be a part of this generation. And on the one hand, we can look around and it's very easy to say, sure, uh, it's a, not an easy generation to be a part of, honestly. Um, very difficult in many levels. Many of us are living in, if we're not living in physical uh, difficulty, we're living with mental difficulty. Sometimes we have both. On some level, we probably have a little bit of everything. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. And, you know, one of the things he talks about, you know, people are abused all the time. You know, and that abuse can take different forms. But like I said in my videos the last uh, yesterday, talking about letting go, you know, it's even hard to let go even when you're being abused, even when you're being hurt. Uh, because, unfortunately, that's what you know. It's like how when we were in Egypt and, you know, we left Egypt, but really all we knew was Egypt. All we knew was uh, slavery, whether it was, you know, we, for sure we knew mental slavery, uh, but we also knew physical labor, spiritual labor, spiritual slavery. And yet when we're, when we're out, we're saying, oh, I wish we could go back. At least we had food. You know, at least we had what we needed, and we forget that in the middle of a system, uh, even when we're being hurt, that it's bad. You know, we think, oh, it's, it's bad, I need to get out. I once knew a man, I met him because I've done a lot of work with people who are in very difficult situations. That's one of the reasons I really appreciated uh, Drawer's message today. Um, on a different level because he was talking about things that I see all the time. Guys, I help thousands of people with difficulties. Um, maybe not to the same level as someone like Drawer or maybe not on the same level as someone who is a rabbi in a pulpit or a rabbi who you know works for us, a synagogue or an organization. But I know that I've helped thousands of people. I know that I've literally saved people's lives because they told me so. Um, so I met a man once and he was homeless and I was trying to help him uh, get off the street and get uh, medical care. And uh, he was an amazing person. I can't remember. He had a, he had a college degree. He... Uh, he had a lot of amazing skills, but his mind and his body were wrecked from drugs. I think he had, he had, uh, if I remember correctly, he he had gotten involved with with meth, and it had ruined his life. But he had a job. He had a job, and I can't remember what it was, but the job gave him a little bit of money because the employer was paying him with a little bit of money so he could buy a little bit of meth, so he could have just a little bit of food, so he could keep him. And I asked him, I said, if we can help you, are you still going to try and go back? And he said, yes. If I remember correctly, he said, yes. I said, why? He said, because at least I have a place to sleep, I have food, and I have that thing that feeds my addiction. 
And that's it, guys. All he wanted was a bit of food, a place to sleep, and he wanted to be able to get his fix because his mind was so trapped and his body, his physical body, like Dror said, you know, your body gets used to certain things, whether it's foods, um, drugs, whatever. And that's where he was. And I wish I could tell you the end of the story, but I can't. Uh, he stayed in a, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it, in a, in a place where people are having real crisis problems. He stayed in what's called a crisis room. Um, it's kind of like being in a hospital, but different. And it's not like being in a full-on institution. But they call it crisis bed. But I don't know if you can understand that unless you've done this kind of work. He stayed there. We tried to help him. He didn't have a phone, I don't, if, I, if I remember correctly. And, you know, when he left, I, I never saw him again. I don't know what happened. I can only hope he's free. But those things, those mindsets, make it very hard for us to get out of things. Make it very hard for us to break out. And it takes a special courage to break out 